So inside of WordPress, go over to products and then click add new. Let's go here and type in rugged backpack. Here's where you would go and add in your relevant details. You can be quite creative as well at this point in terms of alignment, bold italics. You could even drop in further images as well if you really feel you need to, but I'll leave that up to you. On the right hand side, I'm going to select the product image. So we will click this and I will pick this backpack and set that as the image. Now, if you have further images you want to show, maybe from different angles, this is where you would select the product gallery. So if we had further images to highlight maybe how this could be used or how people are utilizing them, and I'm just for simplicity going to go and pick uh, some of these images here like that and that. And I think we'll go with this one as well, I, just so that you can see it when we go to demonstrate it on our actual product page. Let's just add those to the gallery. So I've gone and added in three images there. You will also have the category as well. So we're going to set this to be a backpack. Now, this is where you do have the option to create a new category and doing it on the fly is OK, but I think it's better to do it here so you're in control and you know what you're doing. And of course, you have the option down here, which is just hidden by my face, which is just here. You can see at the bottom now you have product tags where if you want to add in any further information about what kind of backpack it is, maybe brand, anything like that, that you know people are going to be searching for within Google. But we will come back to revisit this when we get to the SEO stage. Now, once you've sorted out your description, you want to try and take one little bit about that, a smaller chunk of that, and drop that into the product short description. Don't copy the entirety of what you had before. You can do, you can get away with it, but I would always say the short description is called short for a reason. Now let's get on to the other details. So is this a simple product? Is it a grouped product? Now grouped product means that let's say I'd created five backpacks and they're all different products. And then I say, hey, for a special price, you can have all five of them for a special reduced discount. The grouped product is what you would pick. And then once you've picked it, you would then go and add in your individual items for the four or five that you're now going to group together. It doesn't have to be four or five. It can be any number that you want, which is more than one. You also have the idea to do a variable product as well. Sorry, a variable product. Let's just go with simple product. And I'm going to say that the price of this is $9.99. In fact, no. The price of this is $14.99, but we are going to have a sale price. Now, you don't have to put a sale price in. If there is no sale, just leave it blank. But I'm going to pop it down to $9.99. But I'm also going to schedule this. So I'm going to say that price is activated from today until the end of May. So from now until the end of May, this is now activated for you to go in and buy at $9.99. After that date, so on the 1st of June, it will then revert back to $14.99 automatically. Let's then go to the inventory. Normally with a WooCommerce, you should have a number. You should have some form of ID. I don't know, it might be numbers or something. If you have not done that, think long and hard about how you're going to manage your stock or if you are dealing with other people who are delivering items. So make sure you have got a SKU number or an ID in there. Is the item in stock or out of stock? Can people, is it out of stock, but you can still actually do a back order? So if you do out of stock, it's out of stock. No one can buy it. But if you do on back order, it's out of stock but people can still buy it and they will know that it's out of stock, but it doesn't stop them getting it so that when it's in stock, you will then distribute it to them. And what if you're only allowed to have one of these items? Now, this becomes really relevant when you're doing a virtual or a downloadable product, because why would you want someone to buy the same course more than once, especially if the course only gives you certain items? So for this particular item, we are going to track the stock quantity. And I'm going to say that we have 50 of these in stock. Do we allow back orders? I'm going to say, no, we don't. We only have 50 and that is it. And I want to be notified via email when we got down to 10. So once 40 are sold, I should be keeping track of this anyway. I want to get an email that says to me, hey, you've only got 10 of these. Do I need to go and order more stock in? Now, if you're selling a course and we will come on to this later on in this tutorial, 
it's going to be a virtual or maybe a downloadable product. If you go for virtual and someone buys something and the payment has been completed, they can access whatever it is that they were going to access. It might be uh, courses, it might be videos, it might be anything on there that they can literally click and open and have a look at. If, however, you go for the downloadable, an extra bunch of features open up whereby now you're going to say, OK, once you've purchased, you will now have access to a particular file. If I click choose file, let's just say I was going to let them have access to this. Let's pretend this was a PDF, a bunch of courses. It could be an ebook, could be music, could be videos, anything that's locked behind a paywall. When I hit this now, once they've purchased, and by the way, you might want to put a name here, you know, and you put name, PDF, whatever. Once they've purchased, this will become available for them in their My Account location. And then when they go to My Account, it will be there. They can click it, open it, read it, download it, do what they want with it. This reiterates why you need to think long and hard about what you're doing. Don't just jump in and go, we're going to create a WooCommerce website. Think about your products, what you're selling, how you're going to sell them, the variations and any other details. Let's go down to shipping now. If your shipping is dependent on the weight of an item, you might want to go in here and start putting in the weight uh, per kilogram, all the dimensions as well. With these bags, we're not worrying about that, so I can leave that blank. Now, when we come to build our store, we do have extra widgets where we can do what's known as an upsell or a cross sell. Thereby, when someone buys a particular bag, it might say, well, hey, you're buying this bag, you might also want to buy something else as well, which goes with this bag. It might be an extra little tag. You know, imagine clothing. You're buying like a blazer. Well, don't you want to buy the trousers that go with that? And what about this shirt? And what about this tie? It's a really great matching set. So this is what you would do here. So I would go in and I would do a search for a product. Now, you're not going to really find anything in here because we've only really create. We're creating one product at the moment. But you would go and add in all of those items. Now, if we go down to attributes, this is where we can now pick the color and click add. And then we can define if this is a red bag, an orange bag or a purple. Now, in this example, I'm not going to use that until we get to the variable product. So I'm going to leave this just as it is. I'm just going to hit remove as well because I don't want to confuse things at this point. In the advanced tab, once someone has purchased it, do you want to leave them another note? Like maybe you want to say um, the item will be with you as soon as possible. Um, we, will, we will contact you to get further details. Now, in its simplicity, that is the product done. So I'm just going to hit publish or update. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this many, many times and I'm just going to substitute the titles and the images. I'm going to add in a ninth bag, but this is the one where we are now going to use the attribute color. So let's just go and duplicate one of the ones we have here. Again, just to make things a little bit quick and easy with how we're building. I've changed the name and I'm going to pick the red one first. I'm going to clear out all the images that we have here at the moment for the product product gallery. I'm also going to remove the price as well. Now over here we have simple product. I'm going to go down and I'm going to pick variable product. So I'm not going to create a red product, an orange and a purple and then group them together. I'm actually just going to create one product and you'll have a field on here where you pick your color and the different colors might have different prices. Let's go and click variable product. Now, because we duplicated and we'd already gone and set items in here, I am going to remove this here and I'm going to remove the skew as well because we're going to set this individually per product. Now, the moment you go for variable, an option would have appeared here. Let me show you the simple. OK, we don't have variations. When you go and click variable, now we see it. Let's go and click create new attribute. Now, we already have the one in here for color. But what if we decided, oh, we need to create an attribute for does it have zips or no zips with button, without button, number one or number two, something like that. You could do it on the fly, but we're just going to pick what we've already created. And this is why I recommend you do it to maintain control over what you're doing and to keep things consistent, especially if you've got someone else who's going to be creating the products for you. They might type in the wrong word or the wrong different types of variation. And I'm then going to add in my terms. So we know that we've got all of these added. Remember, we added them. That's why they're visible here. If you do it on the fly, 
you would have then typed in a uh, color and then you would have typed in your orange, your purple and your red. So I'm going to go with orange and then I'm going to hit save attributes. Then I'm going to go over to variations. Now this is where it's going to say, well, what do you want to add? Well, we've just gone and created them. So the option here is create the variations from the attributes. Remember over here, if I click this, this is what they are. If I go and type in blue, I could do, we don't have a blue bag. But if you wanted to add one in on the fly, you could do. But let's just go over to variations and we are going to say click uh, create based on that. It will give you a warning and go, do you really want to do that? Let's say you went and had uh, three attributes and every single one of those attributes had uh, three variations inside. You're now going to get multiple options going on here. So have a think about how much variation you're going to be adding. I'll hit OK and what it will now do is say three variations have been added because of the three colors and you can see them here. Let's go and click the orange one. Well, this is where you would define your SKU. Are you going to be managing stock? Is it a downloadable or a virtual item? No, it's not. First thing we're going to do though is set our colors. So let's click that and then pick the orange bag. And then we're going to set the price. So I'm just going to go with $19.99. And I'm going to say that we have 45 of these. And then you can go and set any other details required. Let's now go to the purple one. Let's go and set the image. We'll put manage stock. I'm going to change this to be 35 bags. And the price for this will actually be 19 49 so for some bizarre reason it's a little bit higher and then the last one which is red and again you can set a sale price you can schedule it as well if wanted let's now hit save changes and just to finish things off I'm going to go to the product gallery and I'm now going to add in those other two images which were the purple and the orange as well and just add those to the gallery so they are now visible Go and publish that. We now have our nine products. You can see the categories for them. Oh, by the way, I've got this as casual. Let me just go to quick edit because it is not casual. So we now have our nine products. You can see the range of categories. You can see the images. You can see the prices. Some have a sale, some don't. But if you now go to this one here with the Roma, where well, we have three variations, the, the, the lowest or cheapest is 1949. And the highest is $23.99. So we've got a bit of a range going on there. So this is great. We've got our products. But until we stylize this inside Elementor, it looks really ugly. Let me show you. We're going to go and view our store. And this is how it looks. We have a sale logo over here for some of the items. We can sort them by popularity, even though none have been sold yet. High or low or low to high prices. We have the items. It doesn't look all that enticing. You might say, hey, I'd love to buy one of those. You can see the ranges of prices as well, like here, there's a range. You can see here where we have the sale price uh, with what the original price is and what the sale is. But here's where things get really, really ugly now, okay? Let's just go into the corporate one. Let's click it and this is what you're gonna see. We very nicely have the PayPal pay later option added via the PayPal gateway. You can hit add to cart where then you will start to be able to pay via Stripe and all of that. We have the bag, we have images over here if you want, you know, the gallery images that we added. This is where you do need to be careful though. So I intentionally added in some landscape images because I want to show you that if you're not careful with how big they are, you get this variation and it does not look good like that. I don't, I don't like it when things start to move like that. Keep it consistent. We have our short description, title, add to cart. The button is not branded. You've got your bigger description. We've got some related products down here as well. And obviously we have our footer. Let me now just show you the one where we had a range, which is this here. It doesn't matter where you click, whether you click select options or up here. It's going to take you to the page. You have your images below, but we now have this option called choose an option for your color. Let's go with orange. We have the orange, 19.99, 45 in stock. We go for red. It's going to say 10 in stock, 23.99. And we go with purple, 35 in stock. You get the idea. But the way this looks does not fit the brand or the look that we've done with our homepage, our blog pages or anything like that. And this is where Elementor is going to massively help you out.